Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's a special day because I'm actually going to share with you something that I've kind of been holding on to for a while, which is me as a solo fighter with dual swords taking advantage of some poor communication by this team. Now this has happened before in the past, however, today is special because I was able to actually find the video of killing these three players and also their reaction to kind of the craziness. So I would never have known to look back at this player or this TTV guy unless he was posting in the Discord. And surely enough, I actually did run into this guy in the dungeon. Where's my team? No, I'm no. getting f***ing destroyed. I'm dead. <laughs> so that right there was just some of the frustration I caused for these guys with my dual sword setup. As you can tell, it's, it's incredibly hard to hit a fighter when he's moving side to side with sprint. And maybe the server's having a little bit of issues there, I'm not sure, but man, that looked tough. And look, this isn't a video trying to call some guy out about being upset about a video game, etc, etc. I've been there, I've been in teams with friends before in other games in the past where just communication and all these things go wrong and you're left feeling super frustrated because a guy just took advantage of the situation and outplayed your entire team. As you all know, I love being a solo player in this game and find it way less stressful. I'm actually going to share most of this run with you guys where I run into the other two members of this guy's team and some other crazy stuff that happens. Unfortunately, the ending to this video was one that had me quite surprised. And I'm still not quite sure what I should have done better, but we'll get there. So here we are, you can see some of my gear. It's pretty decent stuff actually. And this is actually one of my favorite rooms, Shrine of Protection, lots of places to loot. And really the Skeleton Wizard isn't that hard to kill with a crossbow. And you might have noticed there was a team just in front of me, but those guys are not the same as um, this TTV guy and his friends. So we get basically to clear this room freely. And I'm really surprised those guys just decided to leave. Perhaps they were more respectful of my dual sword setup than the team I'm going to run into shortly. One thing about being a solo player that is really underestimated is just how quiet you can be. And I think it kind of gets highlighted in this, um, this video as well. You can be very quiet, very stealthy, try not to take on too many mobs. I'm expecting those guys to be somewhere as close, so I'm kind of playing this really slow. I hear a mob get killed close by, which means they could be in the room just beside me, which basically now I'm preparing for a fight. I hear a lot of footsteps, so it's a team. And I heard a cleric spell originally, I think, so... Could be a pretty strong team. It's really hard to tell which direction they're coming from, but I hear the cleric spell again. And now it feels like they're chasing after me. We get steps coming close. Turn the corner and get some free damage with the crossbow. And now I'm kind of surprised it's just him. Switch to the short sword, get in close, and back to the army sword. In the gas bro, you got it? Team? Where's my team? No, I'm yeah, getting fucking know. destroyed. I'm dead. <coughs> I'm, why'd you guys not come with me? I literally said this PvP right here. It doesn't I don't matter. Go suicide. Well, I'm dead, so good luck. I, I don't understand where his team went to, and I think this was part of the frustration for him as well. I was just basically able to freely destroy that guy. Even using my weaker dual sword, like my um, short sword, you can deal some pretty heavy damage pretty quickly. Now, I think I'm hearing the other half of his team, but truthfully, these rooms and the audio between them is really misleading. And you'll see I'm kind of sitting here for a while coming up, as I actually think they're, like, in front of me. As it sounds like they're kind of close into this room that I'm in, when actually they're not. They're on the other side. We're gonna go back and loot this guy. Basically at this point, too, I was just looking for meds. Does have a blue spell book? I imagine there's some other good stuff there too, but don't want to linger too long. I'm fully expecting some of his teammates to come by too. Once again, I'm hearing steps, but it's really hard to tell where they're coming from. Crossbow's ready, just in case, and he did come back. I smash him in the face. Two swings, and there goes a the barbarian. Yeah, very frustrating stuff. For them. 
This is the kind of stuff I love. And I think during their video, if you watch some of it, um, their words like rat were getting thrown around, and honestly, you could say that. They knew I was close by. And, uh, yeah, I wasn't really hiding. I was basically just listening for footsteps I couldn't tell the directions of. So we get a bunch of pots from him. And, uh, looting this barb's gonna be kind of a challenge. I'm hearing more steps, but we might sneak out and try to grab some stuff. End up looting the wrong body. And he has some nice stuff, too. Didn't even get to swing it, poor guy. Take his ring. Grab all the gold. That's a nice amount of loot. And seriously, I don't think I get hit by any of these guys. The only damage I've taken has been from the zone. I'm scared. We could have easily killed them. Because they shit on us. They shit I'm on us because it was now. 1v fucking 3! Twice! Bro, no, I literally died of one guy right there. Anyway, I do really hope they add some way of telling which pot level was what, or which bandage was high quality. When you start looting a bunch of corpses, and even when looting, I would probably leave most of the junk pots behind. But when you're just quick looting and throwing them all into your inventory, you got like 8 HP bandages mixed in with your 15 HP bandages, and pots mixed in with like 15 HP pots mixed in with 25 HP pots. So many times I'm like moving my pots around to make sure that I'm equipping the right one. We end up seeing, I think, the remnants of the team we saw earlier. Maybe this is just one guy. He decides to just stand still for a second so I can arc that bolt into his face. Kind of nice of him. And any crossbow at all, headshot is a solid chunk of damage. Even with the white one. For a second I thought I had my blue one on and I was thinking, geez, that probably hit for like 70 or 80. So they're trying to longbow me. So we might have to take this a little slower, especially with all these mobs. We're back to our little cave. Rather than go through all that mess, we're just gonna go around. This room's a lot more friendly. Even though we hate how annoying these guys can be. So now we get another guy, Rogue, just... sneaking around. Another thing to worry about. We don't really want to be fighting a Rogue. Even just one rupture. This guy's following us. We tag him again. He gets his bow back out. Thankfully, we got through this quickly. If we had waited, we'd been screwed. We'd been stuck in there with those guys. But now this is just a mess. Just teams everywhere. This rogue actually does something super honorable. He actually tries to block for his teammate. And succeeds. Which I've never seen before. Allowing that guy basically to get full HP again. Now we're in a bit of a standoff, so I'm kind of hoping another team shows up to interrupt what's going on over here. It looks like looks like one of them's leaving for sure. I have no clue who's on whose team anymore. It must be a team of three that are trying to leave. And this cleric, rogue, and fighter. The cleric starts pushing me with his shield up. He takes an arrow from somebody. Judgments me. Make him pay for that big time. I don't know why he pushed me by himself. I was fully expecting the rogue to be right on his heels, but now I'm able to heal up again, which is kind of fortunate. Very nice of him. There's a whole bunch of loot laying on the ground. We're starting to run out of time, and Zone is starting to push us. And every time a guy jumps into a portal, we lose an opportunity to get out of here. So this guy decides to push us, and he wants to fight. And unfortunately, the server acts really weird during this, so... We end up landing a couple headshots. Hopefully they register. And honestly, the only reason why I won that was because of Adrenaline Rush. Wow, that guy ate four shots. The guy actually thinks he's hit me four times with the Falchion. But if you watch it back, the first two swings, it sounds like I could hit. But they don't actually register. So I feel bad for him there. The server kind of screwed him over a bit. I don't know who was lagging him or me. Uh, basically my headshots, sweeping side to side, were working way better than his arm shots, or body shots, so... That's the problem with the falchion you can run into. Now we're kind of panicking a bit because... I have to get out of here, and there's no more circles. 
And I'd absolutely hate to see all this gear and all this work be for nothing. A smart person would put their weapons away, however. That is not me on this on this day. And we're really panicking here. I really don't want to take red, but I'm gonna have to open red. I honestly don't think I've ever had to do this before. There's just nothing left. So many people survived till the end, we're just taking red. Hell with it. Uh, okay, so we're gonna heal up. We're gonna pray that we make it through red. We got a lot of meds and a crossbow, so... Honestly, I've never been to hell before, or red room, or red dungeon, whatever you want to call it in this game. So I have no clue about making it out of here. And if you look at all the pendants and stuff I've acquired, and purple weapons... Man, I really want to make it out alive. We're gonna get full HP and basically just pray. Pray we get a lucky spawn, but as you can tell already, I'm gonna be pushed by zone, so I have to move out of here. I hear noises of things which are familiar to me, however. Once we open this door, things start to go very poorly. I hope these guys aren't watching me. Not allowed to pick that, so... I hear a noise. I have no idea where it's coming from. So we kill the mosquito, and then I see... Uh, something. It sounds absolutely horrifying. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can just kite this thing, line of sight it. <laughs> it's just super aggressive. Okay, there's two crossbows. I'm thinking, okay, a couple more crossbow bolts. It shouldn't be too bad. We've got a good position here. And then it, it makes it around the wall. It starts pushing me all over the place. Just beating the shit out of me with his wings. Down to like 20 HP. Two more swings. Okay, it's still not dead. It knocks me into the room. And now we're really in trouble. And headshot, and the thing won't die. I don't know how much damage, but it might, I think it was a red demon bat, and... Sadly, I don't think I've ever faced one of those before. I seriously thought I could just line the sight up behind the wall. And there we go. So... I bet you the Twitch guy and his team are a little bit more satisfied having watched this and seen that I don't make it out alive, sadly. So look guys, hopefully we get some good news soon. Uh, long live Dark and Darker. I appreciate all the subscribes, all the likes. I will be maining this game for content, as you all know, if and truly we do get a playtest on April 14th. If I think back to a month ago and how excited I would be at this point in the timeline, it's a little bit sad to think that now I've been like just wondering, curious. I had so many big plans, so many things I look forward to. So here's hoping we actually get back inside the dungeon on April 14th. Thank you all. Cheers.